Hey, good afternoon, followers. I haven't posted in a while, at least uh, nothing more than shorts. Uh, and I apologize for that. It's been so busy and the flight schedule has been so crazy. And I haven't had my normal camera assistant with me to really uh, post some things. Plus a few things I've been working on with my camera person that I normally do have have been stuff that's project based that we've been kind of working on putting together in segments. Uh, you know, one of them coming up, uh, we got the DRTK2 base station, so we're gonna have a video about that, even though there are videos about it, just uh, what we're using it for and how we use it, so that'll be coming up. Uh, and upgrades to the M300, uh, which is our flagship here at Spartan Air Services, we've been doing some upgrades with equipment on that, and I'm excited to put the video out about that, so we've been working on that as well, but uh, figured I'd put up a video tonight. We're flying a mission. I'm down here in New Jersey, and we're flying at a corporate headquarters. Uh, so I'm in an actual office park that's owned by a single company, and they have their headquarters buildings here, and they're uh, very large, uh, multi-floor, again, corporate-style buildings, and we're going to be doing a roof inspection for them. So we flew RGB mission already during the day. We're going to be doing the thermal portion of flying those buildings, obviously, at night. So waiting for, uh, you know, the proper time to put the bird in the air. But I figured I'd do a video on this one because it does highlight some of the challenges that you'll have in the field. You know, when you're flying for clients, you know, everything isn't always perfect. And I see, I follow a lot of groups on Facebook, uh, which I enjoy very much, I'm not knocking it. Um, but there's a lot of posts about People get on a job site and they have an issue or they they come back and they say, well, I ran into this or I had an issue with this. Or, and they're, at least from where I sit, it seems to be this idea that you're gonna get a drone and you put it up in the air and you make money. Um, and as I've said to a lot of the people that have asked me about getting into the business, you know, flying is 20%. 80% is all of your prep work and, you know, training, it's dealing with, you know, all of your computer management, your file management, you know, your, your processing, you're getting the deliverables ready, talking to clients, shaking hands, doing sales calls. I mean, 20% is flying. There's, there's no other way about it. For, for some jobs in some months I go through, 10% of it's flying. I mean, it's just crazy. But that 10%, the 20% of flying, has me so busy and the other stuff has me beyond busy. And I think that that's one of the things I've seen is that, you know, when you sure look at Facebook ads and you see the different schools out there hawking the 107 training and, you know, pay 300 bucks and get a drone pilot's license, you're gonna make money, you know. The problem is, is that in between getting your drone pilot's license and making money, you know, they make the space look that big, but the space is, is, is bigger than you can stretch your arms at. It's like a universe in between those two points. And they don't talk about that, you know? So I figured I'd put a little video up. What I'm facing here tonight, and I, I end up flying in highly complex environments. Uh, as a certified thermographer, uh, you can count on it. Okay, I've, I have, I can't remember the last time I went out and flew a job where it was like, you know, one, two, three. Actually, let me take that back. I flew a job like that the other day, but it was five photographs. It was just a real estate job. I don't do very many of them because they're the lowest paid tier jobs out there, but it was right by my house. And I still do some third party flying for some companies and uh, pretty friendly with the one company they called me and said, hey, you know, this is like right by your house. Could you think you could fit it into whatever else you're doing? So that was actually easy. I put the bird up, it was, you know, I had no restricted airspace. So it was a delight to fly that. So I did some cardinal images. I did a nice big image of the front. I flew a panoramic video and I was done. And, you know, it wasn't a killer. I got 90 bucks, but you know, that's about the minimum. So it's one of the other posts that I see too. Uh, guys complaining about third party companies and the low pay, and lousy pay. You know, if you take a $60 job, that's on you. Uh, you can't complain about it but then go do it or go do it, but then complain about it, whichever order you do it in, you know, you, 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 if you took it, you, you know, I mean, that's it. And if we, we guys keep taking those jobs, those jobs are going to keep coming up on the market because someone is doing them, you know? So I, I, as a matter of course, don't do them. Okay. But 90 bucks, it took me about five minutes to get there. I was on site for 15 minutes. 
and then I was back home. So that's my minimum. But anyway, <clears throat> my complex environment, and you can hear it, what I'm facing tonight, that's a Diamond DA20. It's just off camera, but it's right here. It's on a downwind leg. I am a half a mile away from an airport. But this airspace is not restricted. I don't, I went into Lance, I checked it out. I don't have to do anything. This is clear airspace, but again, very close to this airport. And even though it's a very small airport, it's a very busy airport for general aviation. These guys are flying a lot. And that is a student aircraft. So, as soon as I saw that, and depending on what aircraft you fly, what camera that you're gonna use is gonna dictate the height that you need to fly at for your thermal okay now this particular mission the parameters which i know very well you know being a certified thermographer i have to be a hundred and eleven feet above my target okay and these buildings are five stories high so that's a hundred and eleven feet on top of that five stories so that's going to put me up there a little bit this downwind leg it depends on their altitude but i felt it was pretty close so even though I don't have any restriction I can fly here, I called the airport. I spoke to the people there. And they were actually very grateful because the one guy said, you're about the only drone pilot that's ever called us. There is no communication between drone pilots and us, and we've had some issues here at this particular airport. So I gave them the parameters of my mission, the flight times that I would be in, and we worked out a window of what I'm gonna do. I've been monitoring their frequency, um, They've been notifying pilots, UAS operating in the area, gave them my maximum altitude just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room because you don't ever want to box yourself into something because you may need a little bit of altitude. You know, um, the old a aviation saying is, that, you know, altitude is life. Okay, that's true in the drone industry too. Okay, you know, a, a, a little bit of a block of altitude is always going to give you a bit of wiggle room. Okay, and, you know, as the old saying goes too, you know, you can't beat the record for low level flying. Okay, if you understand what I mean, because, you know, eventually you hit the ground. So a little pilot humor there. Um, but that's what I'm dealing with. So I've got the airport behind me. Downwind leg is here. Um, you know, it's it's a challenging environment, you know, to fly in. And that's what I mean about coming out into these places. You know, someone's going to give you a set of mission parameters if you're flying for a third party company. Let's use that as an example. Uh, there's one in particular out there I see a lot of complaints about. You know, they, they get this neat mission parameter and then and the client, you know, or the third party comes in and is going to tell, oh, you'll be on site about an hour. One, that's never true. So take their time estimate, throw it right out the window. Okay, two, okay, it's never as smooth as easy. To give you that little thing, airspace, clear. Okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Okay, I got a sky full of airplanes and helicopters here. So, yeah, and that's the other thing. I have the airport there which is operating fixed wing and helicopters. And I also have a small heliport off to the other side, about a mile away. So, um, you know, and for some reason to boot, there was a major newsworthy event a couple of miles away because I had news helicopters operating over there for a few hours and transiting through this area to this heliport over here to get fuel, I'm, I'm imagining. So, but just wanted to put that video out there, um, give you guys an idea of, of what we're looking at and what we're flying today. You know, my trusty M300, uh, we're getting her ready. As you guys always know, anytime I'm flying at nighttime, radar goes on. H2OT quad, right, always. Whole bunch of gear with me. Um, you know, my batteries, extra chargers. Uh, just got the new TB65 batteries. I'm really excited. I've flown these a few times. Definite improvement. Always have the Honda generator with me. Some extra gasoline. My tool kit. You know, sometimes you got to tighten things up on an aircraft. Things do come loose. So, um, but that's basically it, guys. I am going to get myself prepped. I have to uh, get the camera set there. I got to make up my flight plans in Pilot 2 now. I'm going to fly this in Pilot 2, and we're getting toward the time that I can kind of take off here. So that's pretty much it. We're going to do this thermal, and if you like, I'll attach a few images to the end of the video for you guys. And, uh, yeah, other than the air traffic, this is really great flying conditions. Um, I'm basically kind of out here in the countryside, even though I'm in an office park. Uh, perfect humidity for this job, too. With thermal, remember, humidity plays a factor, guys. When you take your thermal training, you'll see how that comes in. So uh, right now, my humidity is well under 60%, which is actually pretty dry, if you think about it. So I'm pretty happy there. 
Um, all of the other, you know, weather, not a factor, wind, not a factor. So I'm gonna have a really excellent flight over these very large buildings tonight. Looking forward to it. Flying the M300 is always a dream. Uh, and look out for the upcoming videos. Hopefully they'll be dropping soon. The modifications to the M300, some exciting stuff. Um, that I've been testing has been working out really really great. So, uh, you know the m300 uh, Great aircraft even though the m350 is out there uh, to give you guys a little spoiler alert I'm kind of making an m300 m350 hybrid If that makes any sense, but anyway, let's get back to work. I'm gonna get this off the ground I'd love to give you guys some video of me doing it, but my uh, cameraman not around so Again, appreciate all of my subscribers. You know, you guys follow me. Appreciate all support. And I always love the comments. So if you could do me a favor, just like, um, comment if you like, uh, subscribe. It's free, as they say, but uh, definitely like. It does help the algorithm. I know I'm not trying to get rich off this or make any money, but uh, at least like my videos to be seen. So as always, I extend my best wishes to you and your families. Stay safe, stay healthy. All right, guys, the bird is ready. She's up and running. All the systems have been checked. And because I'm flying in airspace with other aircraft and the remote is warning me of that every two seconds, we added additional lighting onto the aircraft. So we have Simic forward and rearward facing FAA approved anti-collision lighting added to the factory top and bottom anti-collision lighting that's going. And as you know, at night I fly full radar all systems checked, props checked, everything double checked and tightened, and we are ready to go. And we are getting there. This is a gorgeous night for a beautiful thermal flight, guys. I'm excited. There we go, huh? Nice whole parking lot. This is an empty parking lot that they gave me. It's the maintenance parking lot. They gave me this to use for operations today, which is really nice. Uh, really nice customer. These guys really uh, take good care of me. Here's the taco. And uh, yeah, so we're ready to go. A little quick shot of my day here, guys. Back to you with some of the thermal shots at the end of the video.